After carrying out relentless airstrikes on the Gaza Strip, Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant told his men to get ready for a ground offensive. The same was echoed by Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu when he met the soldiers, calling on them to fight till victory is secured. Israel has massed tens of thousands of troops along the border with Gaza following the October 7th cross-border massacre by Hamas militants. Meeting Israel's infantry soldiers on the Gaza border, Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant urged the troops to be organized and ready to enter the Gaza Strip. He, however, did not mention when the invasion would begin. Meanwhile, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also met with combat soldiers at the Gaza border. He reaffirmed that the troops, the entire state of Israel stands behind them and vowed to emerge victorious after the war. הם לחמו כמו אריות, הם לחמו כמו אריות. אתם מוכנים להמשך? כן! אנחנו הולכים לנצח בכל העוצמה, אתם מוכנים? כן! כל עם ישראל עומד באחריכם, ואנחנו ניתן את המכה הקשה לאויבים שלנו כדי שנשיג ניצחון, לא ניצחון. מוכנים? כן! Meanwhile, as Israel continues to pound Gaza, new satellite images show a number of people taking shelter in schools and hospitals around Gaza City. Now as the war drags on with no peace in sight, concerns over its expansion remain. The conflict has already spilled into the wider West Asian region and many Iran-backed militant groups are seem to have seemed to be they now seem to be involved and the heavy US presence in the region and its involvement in the war is in their crosshairs. In the latest, the Pentagon says that a U.S. Navy warship intercepted three cruise missiles and several drones that were launched by Iran-backed Houthi movement from Yemen. Though the Pentagon said it is no certainty of the target of the drones and missiles, but they were potentially bound for Israel. To that end, the crew of the guided missile destroyer USS Kearney, operating in the northern Red Sea earlier today, shot down three land attack cruise missiles and several drones that were launched by Houthi forces in Yemen. This action was a demonstration of the integrated air and missile defense architecture that we have built in the Middle East and that we are prepared to utilize whenever necessary to protect our partners and our interests in this important region. There were no casualties to U.S. forces and none that we know of to any civilians on the ground. And while U.S. President Joe Biden was in Israel on Wednesday, U.S. military forces in Iraq were targeted in two separate drone attacks with one causing injuries to a small number of troops. The Islamic resistance in Iraq again and Iran-backed group claimed the responsibility for the attacks. Meanwhile, tensions are already soaring in the northern Israeli front between Israel and the Iran-backed Hezbollah group in Lebanon. In the latest, the Lebanese army, it's alleged that a journalist was killed by Israeli gunfire on Thursday in, a su in southern Lebanon border area. On the other hand, Israel's military said earlier that its forces had targeted Hezbollah infrastructure and struck three people who attempted to launch anti-tank missiles at Israel. On the Lebanese army's allegations, Israel says it's investigating the matter. Meanwhile, Israel's military is evacuating 28 communities near the northern border with Lebanon because of escalating tensions. And Saudi Arabia has advised its nationals in Lebanon to leave the country immediately. For more on this, we're now being joined by Mr. Mohammed Baroun, live from Bonn, Germany. Mr. Baroun is the Director General of the Dubai Public Policy Research Center. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Morning. Thank you very much for having me. Now, sir, my first question to you. Israel's Defense Minister has told troops that a call for ground offensive may come soon, as I mentioned earlier. What's your take on this? What do you think would be the practical implications of a ground offensive in this war? Well, the Israeli Defense Army has got their own plans and they have announced objectives. Uh, however, uh, Gaza being an extremely dense uh, city, possibly three times denser than Washington, D.C., uh, this will not be without a very, very high cost on civilians. 
uh, this might be a political win uh, to quell people's uh, fear, show that the government can respond and retaliate, but it will have a very dear price when it comes to both tactical and strategic uh, objectives. Tactically, uh, this is going to be a major urban warfare. warfare. Hmm. There will be casualties on both sides, also on the Israeli side. Strategically, uh, Hamas is winning legitimacy. It has lost for a long time because people now do not distinguish between Hamas and the Palestinians. Hmm. Uh, so there are concerns of this war spilling into a wider regional conflict as well, especially with the involvement of Hezbollah with no peace in sight. What's your assessment of the diplomatic efforts so far? Do you think peace can be negotiated anytime soon? Uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, efforts trying to uh, contain this. As you can see in, in, in Lebanon, Hezbollah is still attacking on its own territory in, in the areas that has always been contentious. Uh, when it comes to uh, the uh, BMF forces in, in, in Iraq and the Houthi, they are targeting the U.S., they're not targeting Israel so far. But that is an indication that this could blow up. And I think a major uh, uh, indicator or um, what could change the direction of, of the compass is the amount of civilian casualties in a ground offensive. And the United States is preparing to send two Iron Dome missile defense systems back to Israel. President Joe Biden is hoping to secure more aid for Israel by the Congress as well. What's your take on the United States' involvement here? Well, the United States is doing what it, it's always done, uh, which is standing by Israel. This is a commitment on both sides, and they've always done it. I mean, uh, giving Israel... Uh, uh, air defense capability at this point is very important to prevent more casualties, civilian casualties. Uh, however, supporting a ground offensive uh, might uh, have implications in the U.S. Remember uh, President uh, Joe Biden, when he went to uh, Tel Aviv, he attended uh, a cabinet meeting. Uh, and I think if there are a lot of casualties, uh, there might be people who will circle back and say the U.S. is responsible for this. They were in the decision making. They were providing, uh, you know, uh, weapons and, 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 and weapon systems to Israel to support the ground offensive. This will bring us back to the time when people, you know, during the Iraq war have seen the U.S. as, a, you know, a disruptive uh, actor in the region. This is a time that we have passed. Now, unfortunately, we seem to be on the verge of going back to it. All right. Mr. Barun, thank you so much for joining us on the show with your perspective on this. Thank you very much. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.